Krishna. No, he's using he's using that for an altar. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Bhava, Jai Radha Madhava. Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Balava Kiribara Dhari Gopi Jana Balava Kiribara Dhari Jusso Dhanandana Bhajajana Ranjana Jusso Dhanandana Bhajajana Ranjana Jusso Dhanandana Bhajajana Ranjana Jamana Tira Banachari Jamana Tira Banachari Jaya Ratha That's perfect. You make that an altar. Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Bada Dhari Gopi Jana Balaba Giri Bada Dhari Yasodha Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasodha Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasodha Nandana Rajajana Ranjana Yasara Nandana 
रज जान रंजना जमुना चीरा वन चारी जमुना चीरा वन चारी राधा माधवा पंजाबी हारी जे राधा माधवा पंजाबी हारी
So you have to kind of connect with me. You understand? Hare Krishna, I'm just listening to me. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, wrong beat. Give me the drum, I'll show you. Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare my right hand. Hare 
हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Lord come. Auspicious days of Karthik, the last five days started yesterday, and we have been very fortunate that we have holy association in the beginning of Vishnu Panchaka. So it, it, it's told that when Krishna is very happy with devotees, he gives the best gift, and the, the best gift is the association of holy saints. And Mahaprabhu has been that saint for us in Amsterdam. Keeps uh, 
coming to us even though we are absolutely unworthy of it. Uh, thank you so much for <laughs> coming and I'll uh, send you the bill later. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much uh, Mahatma for coming and blessing us. Uh, <coughs> let's welcome yesterday we had program with uh, Gita Govinda Mataji. Yes, uh, it was a wonderful program I heard. So today we have a program here at Rimpu Prabhu's house. Thank you, Rimpu Prabhu, Namita Mataji, Satakshi, and the wife for hosting this program. So uh, th thank you so much all the Vaishnavas for coming here and uh, purifying this house. It's very Krishna, simple place to be Just keep coming. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let's welcome Mahatma Prabhu to our association. Uh, not just today, but for next uh, many days now. So, very loudly chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Hundred times louder. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Shami Iti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nivisesa Sanyavari Pascati Vasitane Manchakalpa Tarubya Scha Kripa Sindhubyeva Cha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namaha Mukam Karuti Vachalam Pongo Langayati Girim Yakrapa Tamaham Bande Siguru Dinatarina. Thank you. Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhupada and Rishi Adaita Gadadha Vasari Gora Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. So um, I don't think we picked a topic for tonight, did we? You know, it's like I, I um, unless I have something on my mind that I'm really enthusiastic to speak about and have been thinking about, I uh, prefer that you ask questions. And usually I give a whole lecture on one question <laughs> or two questions. But um, the reason that I like questions because it's relevant to where to what you're doing, what you're thinking, uh, maybe there's something you're confused about, some controversy, uh, something. Um, I like to talk about what's relevant, so. Anything is fair game. Doesn't mean I'll answer it, but you can ask it anyway. So just wake me up when you have a question. <laughs> I'm going to go into Samadhi now. Yeah. So we just had the elections okay. in Holland mm -hmm. two days ago, or yeah, two days ago. I heard. So maybe it's interesting to speak about uh, devotees and politics uh -huh. and our role in this politics. <laughs> it's an interesting topic because for two reasons. One, the prophet didn't want us to speak about politics because it could malalign our movement with one party or another. You know, you might be favorable to one party and we say something against them and now you don't like devotees. You, you know what I mean? Um, but some of you may, may know that the devotees got the idea to run for office, like mayor or governor, I think mayor. And I don't think they seriously thought they would win, but it was a platform to educate people because they would get a platform with the other candidates. You know about that? It was called the In God We Trust Party. <laughs> and devotees, you know, were wearing suits, ties, and so on. And Prabhupada wanted them to preach, like, you know, no meat eating, no illicit sex, you know, like, really, we're going to vote for you, you know, that's our life and soul. But the devotees who did it said, well, people listened. They had a platform. <laughs> so that really wasn't politics as such. It was, it was a platform to spread Krishna consciousness. But the thing that I find interesting 
is that when you talk about a world that's Krishna conscious, then that means the devotees have to be involved in politics because <clears throat> they're now in charge of the welfare of the people, so they have to deal with it. And that's why you find in the Bhagavatam there's so much elaboration on saintly kings and their duties and how they operated and how they interacted with Brahmins and took guidance from them. And, and it's all in the context of the, what's the best thing for the people, you know, socially. You know, things we don't think about or even we're not supposed to do. Like, you know, um, taking care of, like taking care of old people. If, if the movement started opening up old age homes, people would think, well, that's weird. You know, why are you doing that? Um, so, but in a context where if devotees, you know, let's say that some prime minister said something, I want you to just get, you know, ten Brahmins, I want you to be my prime minister, then devotees have to deal with all that, right? because it's now their dharma. So why it's interesting is Prabhupada talks a lot about it, you know, like in a Krishna conscious world, where in a world where there's saintly kings, it's like this, and this would be punished, and this would be accepted, and this wouldn't be accepted. But um, we weren't in a position where we could deal with it. Um, the other thing that Prabhupada said about politics, but not only politics, just about in general, uh, things going on in the world in general, pandemics, vaccinations, pandemics. Um, you know, and so you can get caught up in that. Uh, it may be necessary a little bit just to be educated, but you could get a little bit caught up in it where it could start, you know, taking your time up. So one place, the prophet said, you know, the world will just go on the way it's going on. Don't spend too much time worrying about it. Because you could get very involved. One conspiracy after another. And um, so he said, you know, it's like, you know, materialists, they're just going on in the way they're going on, and you could you know, talk about it and speculate about it. And, but Prabhupada said, better just focus on your spiritual life, go back to Godhead. So that's, you know, um, that could sound like, well, we're not very compassionate, we don't care. Not exactly like that. The Prabhupada, you know, he was trying, trying to train us as Brahmins, and so any of his disciples that were drafted for the Vietnam War, he would help them get out on, a, on a, what they called conscientious objector. You're objecting conscience. I, I will not fight in this war on religious reasons. And he would say, you're Brahmins, you're not meant to fight. You know, and so we're, we're creating Brahmins, and the Brahmins would guide them. The leader. So that that idea was there. And did you know that when Prabhupada first came to America, he did not have his eyes set on hippies. He had his eyes set on the wealthiest people mm. and the most important people. He wanted to meet Rockefeller. He wanted to meet Nixon and like that. Did you know that? No. Like he, you know, he, he met an important people. Say, can you give me an appointment with the president? Can I meet these people? He wanted influence right from the top. So, yep. But that's brahminical. But you want to influence the people who are making decisions. So we are concerned, but he didn't want to directly get involved in it. At a, uh, maybe in the future time when we're establishing Varnashram, it will be different because if you're in a position where you have to care for people, then you have to think about these things. You know, like Prabhupada said, you know, our, our position is not to open hospitals. People say, you know, you should open hospitals. But that's like... You know, that's like going to McDonald's and saying you should open a hospital. You know, like, why should McDonald's open a hospital? Why would any restaurant open a hospital? Or like, you know, you go to your high school and you complain, you know, protest outside your high school. You should open a hospital. It's obviously not the purpose, but the function of the uh, high school. So the Prabhupada said, you know, we're Brahminical. It's not like, you know, we want to bomb hospitals and close them down. That wasn't the idea. So, but we're Brahmins, so we want to do Brahminical activity. So it could sound insensitive, but it's like people would ask Prabhupada, you know, your disciples, they don't, they don't contribute to society. They could become doctors, lawyers, and they're just dropping out. 
university. And Prabhupada said, there's enough, you know, it's like, we don't need more doctors and lawyers, there's plenty of them. But I did found out, find out we need more mental health professionals. Did you know that? Did you know there's a shortage of them? Isn't that interesting? My daughter's in that field, so I edit all her papers. So I get to learn all these things. And uh, there's statistics like the population of a city and how many mental health professionals are there and how many more you need. And practically everywhere, they need more. They don't have enough. Um, but, you know, Prabhupada said, there's enough doctors, enough lawyers, enough this or that. We don't have to do that. But what we can give, they're not giving it special. So that was his... You know, aside from any discussion on Varnashram, which he didn't have a lot, um, that was his general general idea. But, you know, go to the first canto, it's like all over there. Duties of kings, and you know, so you think, why is he talking about that? Maybe someday we'll need it. Maybe we'll be in that position. Otherwise, seems kind of um, like awkward, doesn't it, that he would talk about it so much? Maybe we'll in the, be in the position where we get to advise leaders and therefore he's talking about these things. So, that's a general idea. It's nothing practical, but it's a general idea. So, um, one of the problems with politics is you can make enemies with people who don't, you don't agree with or they don't agree with you. Right, so you know how people say I don't talk religion or politics because they're divisive. So, um, but some people are into politics, some aren't. What can you do? Um, then we have one devotee in America running for president. Uh, not now, but four years ago, three years ago, and now you have someone running for president whose name is Vivek Ramaswamy. And I think it's a good idea he becomes president because everyone will be saying Rama. <laughs> right? They're, I mean, they're already saying it. Irrespective of, of how he'll do, but that's auspicious. Did you know that? The Indians running... So of course, they have an Indian uh, prime minister of the UK, for now anyway. Um, Prabhupada may have spoken politics privately with a few of his disciples. You can see some recordings and history and the British, how they destroyed India, and like that. But it was never like public lecture. You know. I don't think he wanted us talking about it so much. This is kind of addictive, isn't it? Politics, talking about it. That's my perspective. Maybe some other devotee might say, no, get your guns, you know, <laughs> revolution. But um, <coughs> Prabhupada once said, he said, the leaders of your countries they don't pay attention to what I'm doing. So, so they don't know what I'm doing. He said, but if they knew what I was doing, they would kill me. Because I'm pouring acid on the foundation of their materialistic civilization. And if they knew that, they would stop me. That was interesting. So, um, In some parts of the world that I preach, we are asked to not mention anything about politics because the situation is that if the government finds out that you're speaking against the government, they could stop the whole movement. So you have to be careful. And I think it was that way in Russia that the leaders could not speak against the war and against Putin. They had to support it because they were being monitored and that was required. So you don't have to be sensitive. That's about all I can say for now without yeah. 
Yes. Maharaj, uh, we see that many times uh, when, when we, uh, in the beginning, when we come to the service uh, association, uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm, um, everything is new and um, starting new projects and uh, assisting new projects. So, uh, things eventually die down. The enthusiasm yeah. sort of uh, uh, it waters down, but totally it becomes diluted and then uh, everything which, which were very uh, exciting and uh, giving a lot of uh, nourishment and happiness a few years ago, start, they start becoming a bit uh, stale. Um, and that's something which I have seen in myself and I uh, have been struggling and over the last 20 years now, I've also seen other others and did that have any correlation with when you got married? <laughs> I mean, seriously, because that does happen. You know, it's just it's such a change of life. Yeah. And then you have to start working. So that, that's, sometimes there is a correlation there. Um, your question is why it happens or how to avoid it? And yeah, how can we keep our enthusiasm yeah. on a high time? Um, Why do you think it happens? You think there's a lack of faith? Or just a little bit of overwhelm with Maya? Or um, you left Maya a few years ago and you're missing her? <laughs> that does happen. Um, oh, that's not it? That's just water, water? Um, that definitely happens. Um, and Prabhupada talks about it. I mean, it's not the only reason, but he says that, you know, your people come to spiritual life because of bad experience in the material world, and then they become devotees and things are nice, and they forget. And then they think, well, we have a second try at it. You know, I failed the first time. I've got rid of my misery by being a devotee, so let me go back out. It doesn't really make sense, and like if Krishna consciousness relieved your misery, why would you go back out to the same thing that caused it? But you know, Maya doesn't. It's not logical. So that's one of the reasons. Um, that's uh, quite common in some countries, like the political situation, the, the economy, etc., is really bad, and a lot of people become devotees, and then they, in devotional service. They become a little better off over time, and then they leave. So that can happen. I mean, obviously, anything new is exciting. This devotee just told me he used to work for a boat manufacturer. I had the saying, if you're buying a boat, the two happiest days are the day you buy it and the day you sell it. <laughs> So, you know, you come running into devotional service, but you don't real, necessarily realize what, you're, what it actually is. And then when you have to roll your, up your sleeves and do it, you know, and you realize it's more than just street rice and pakoras <laughs> and a nice kirtan, you know, there's a philosophy. Then obviously it's like, oh, I have to recalibrate this. You know, I remember, I mean, I didn't, I really was looking for a reason to drop out of university. And I didn't have a good one until I met devotees. And I said, okay, this is, this is my out. <laughs> this is, this is a, you know, this is worth it. And I can just go right out of university into an ashram. It's not, no financial consideration. I don't have to work. I didn't want to work. And my whole connection with the devotees was Bhagavad Gita and Kirtan and Prasadam. And I was learning the philosophy but the, like surrender, austerity, pure devotional service, that part, they didn't lure us in with that part. They lured us in with your part and parcel, your know, duties to serve and so forth. And so when I moved in the temple, after like two weeks, I, I, I realized what I had gotten into. I was like, oh, like this is kind of like serious, isn't it? <laughs> so that could be also like, you know, the the realization that it's not exactly what you thought it was, and it's going to require more work than you thought you'd have to put in. 
Another reason is if we uh, commit offenses or we don't execute devotional service properly, then around the, the creeper of bhakti, weeds grow. And if you don't pick them, they suffocate your creeper. Um, another reason is people, like if they do it when they're young, and, you know, 19, 18, 20, and then by their 30, they're like, oh, you know, I was a little too fanatical, and, you know, I renounced everything, and, you know, there was, um, do you know, what was this? Yeah, devotees have told me, like, I joined when I was like 16. I, you know, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no partying, no drinking, nothing. And now I'm 40 and I want to do it. Because I never did it. I miss it. You know, so like, yeah. Not, I mean, obviously not everybody, but that can happen. Um, I was thinking about it today. Maybe not your question, but I was thinking about why people, no, it was basically why people give it up. And I was feeling, at least from my personal experience, I was feeling like, a deeper connection both to the philosophy and the mission and Srila Prabhupada. Like you, like you have to be so connected that it's just like there's no question that you don't want to do this. But faith is weak. You don't have a depth of understanding of the philosophy. You're not connected to the mission of Prabhupada. You don't have maturity to understand how to pace yourself over time. Then any of those, any of those things could create problems. Because, you know, you went too fast too. And you're like, okay, I went too fast, too much. And you just, this is too much, I can't handle it. I don't know what I'm getting into. I'm going too fast. Um, or, you're like, nah, it's not really for me. I don't know. But it's, it's like you have this opportunity to go back to Godhead. How is that not for you? you know, it doesn't make sense, does it? And you have this mission, like we talked about last night. You have this mission to serve. It's such an amazing mission. If you connect with Prabhupada, how would you leave it? So, um, you know, one thing you could do is that you, you naturally expect that after the initial enthusiasm, we have to get to work and roll up our sleeves, you know, after the, after the pakoras and sweet rice. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, you had your pakoras and sweet rice, now, you know, wash the floor, <laughs> you know, do some work. So, um, one thing you can consider is when people come, to, like help them traverse that so they don't go like too far too fast and then regret it. And make them aware that, you know, you, you have lots of enthusiasm, but you know, it's going to have to be generated by something deeper eventually. Because, you know, a lot of your initial enthusiasm is generated by your frustration with material life. And you're like, ha, ha. I'm, you know, when I first came to the temple, I thought, I want to live in a house where everybody chants Hare Krishna because nobody in my house chants. And I go, that would be so nice just to live with devotees. And every morning they're chanting and I could just chant and you know, not bother anybody. And um, so there was like this, you know, attraction. But it was also being motivated by what I didn't like. Right? And so... You get you're like you get really into it because this is really what you want. But as years go by, that's not such a strong motivation because you're not connected with it anymore. So it's naturally, you know, naturally it's like you have this wind behind you, but at some point you have to have it in front of you to pull you. And if it's just behind you coming from frustration, like it's not gonna permanently work. <laughs> frustration, material frustration is an impetus, but it's not the best impetus. It's not the longest lasting impetus. Because if that was the best impetus, then periodically you just, you know, go out and have an accident or something, you know, just to like to remember how bad the world is, you know, eat something that's unhealthy, go in the hospital. You know, that would be stupid, right? 
What are you doing, Prabhu? Oh, I'm going to get sick today. I'm overeating. You know, that'll help. That'll, that's going to motivate me. Then, then I won't eat for the next week. So, detachment, it's got to come from something positive, you know, an actual attachment to Krishna. So, you know, you could get this big force behind you for a while, but if you don't have something pulling you, how long can that last? You know, one, one guru back in the fanatical days, he said, look, you know, if you want to get married, find a girl you don't like and marry her, because the marriage will be so bad, you'll just get out of it in a few years. And it's like, okay, is that our philosophy? I don't think so. But Gaur Mohan, he said to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada wanted to marry another girl. Yeah. He said, you don't like your wife, it's a blessing. Yes, I do. Okay, everyone find someone you don't like and marry them, it's a blessing. Um, well, if it's your second wife. Um, I think it's a little circumstantial, you know, because he wanted an English wife, right? Really? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. His, his mother wanted him to become a lawyer and they were going to send him to England and he, Prabhupada said, this is what he said, he said, I thought I'd get a white wife and have white children. <laughs> and my father wouldn't allow it. He said, I didn't like my wife. And his father said, yeah, that's good, you won't become attached. But Prabhupada said she was nice. It wasn't like, you know, just he wasn't that attached. I don't, maybe he wouldn't be attached to any woman, who knows. Um, But it's obviously not the process to uh, you know, find something horrible so you can suffer. <laughs> but, you know, this is true of so many things. There's a lot of enthusiasm in the beginning. And, you know, Vishwanath Chakravarti talks about it. Utsahan Mai. And he translates it as puffed up with enthusiasm. You know, it's false, false enthusiasm. So then you can say maybe that enthusiasm wasn't real. False. You know. It's hard to surrender, isn't it? When you actually realize what it is. Right? Oh, Prabhu, I want to be a disciple. I said, why would you want to surrender? Like, you realize what that means? I don't think most disciples don't realize what it means, because if they did, they wouldn't want to be disciples. <laughs> like if they, if you were, act, were actually doing this like traditional, like the real deal guru disciple, you have to actually surrender. And if the guru does not call you for lunch, you don't eat lunch that day. <laughs> you ready for that? Of course, Prabhupada didn't do that, but strictly speaking, that's what it is, you know. You, so, um, so I think, you know, that's part of it. As you go deeper into bhakti, you realize, oh yeah, there's you really. If you wanna, if you wanna succeed, you gotta give up some things that maybe you thought you didn't have to. And so that could also damper your enthusiasm, don't you think? It could inspire you also. It depends who you are. You know, you're all sitting here thinking, oh, I wish I had Prabhupada's association. Well, a lot of his servants had it and left. This is too intense. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I wish I would have met him. I would have wanted to serve him. Yeah. Sometimes it was like so much surrender demanded. That like they, they, the servant said, can I go now? I've been here six months. This is like, it's all I can handle. Wow. Interesting, huh? Um, so that could be part of it. Just the realization of the demand of it. Of course, you know, you surrender according to your advancement, your ability, and like that. But when you understand what it means, sometimes it's like, oh, okay, I don't know what I can do. And then so you start recalibrating, like, I came in running at 100 kilometers an hour, but I think if I'm going to make this race 
to the end I got to go like 65. Right? It's just sometimes it's just reality. You know, what can you do? You miscalculated. Thought you could. You, you ever? When I was in high school, we run. We had track. We run races, and I'd always run too fast in the beginning. And you ever do that? And then you're like, you know, you're in front of everybody, and then all of a sudden, huh, 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 everyone's passing you. So, so I think sometimes that happens. You know. Like I could run this race fast the whole mile, but you know, a quarter mile in, you realize you can't. And you have to recalibrate. So sometimes it's not actually bad what they're doing. Sometimes it's, in, it's mature and intelligent. Just realizing, I can't run that fast. i got to slow down. Right? But um, the individual may not realize that. They may get discouraged. They may not realize, no, it's just kind of normal. You found your place. And then you go from there. Is that all right? Uh, you have some idea? Thank you. People always ask, you know, why do people leave? There's so many reasons. You know? As many people have left, that there's that many reasons. Yes? Well, I was just wondering, like, <coughs> there's this progression given at the Ashrata and yeah. then Sadhu Sandhya, but, you know, so how, what you say, how does it fit in this progression? Well, the stage of nishta is where you become steady. And so, bhajana kriya is initiation or practice, like you're, you're a sadhaka, but it doesn't mean you're steady. And anarta nivriti means you're getting there. And nishta means you're steady. So, so before nishta, you, you know, you can always be flopping up and down. That's it's the nature of it. Mm -hmm. Because you say it, you perhaps not enough faith, but it starts with faith. But it's a development of faith. It starts with a little bit of faith. And then, so when you have love, you have full faith. When you start, you have little, you know, enough faith that, like, this is good, I want to do it. So it, there are places where Prabhupada said that the development of bhakti is the development of faith. And nishta is that faith which is not going to be broken anymore. I remember one fine day when I was just a new devotee, we got accosted by some very heavy-duty Christians telling us, we are of the devil and we are going to hell because we're <coughs> Hare Krishna devotees. And I've like, been in the temple two weeks and, you know, <laughs> and devotees are arguing with them. Rah, 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 and they're... Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> when I got back to the temple, I was like, <laughs> you know, some devotees were like, I don't know if I want to stay a devotee anymore, you know, maybe they're right. It was like, because we're all young. So our faith was, you know, pliable. And, you know, it could change because of the circumstance. But later on, when those things happened, I just come back and I'm like, I doesn't know what he's talking about. It was like nothing. It didn't bother, you know. So when you get closer to Nishta or Nishta, it's not going to bother you. But before that, that's the nature of it. Right? Yeah. Because nishna means steady. And nishna comes after anartha nivriti, which means the things that would make you unsteady are pretty much gone now. You know, the bigger obstacles. And so, yeah. Um, but, but faith and sadhusanga are, are always there in every stage, obviously. But that's, you know, the way Rupa Goswami pro, pro, um, shows it is that, well, you can't do anything without faith. You won't step, you won't make any effort to be a devotee. <coughs> and, and sometimes faith is described as appreciation. You just say, devotees are good. I like them. Let me get one of their books. Let me go to their temple. And then you like the devotees. Oh, these people are nice. I like them. I can relate to them. This is my tribe, spiritual people. And that's going to, and then Prabhupada said, and when you associate with devotees, you'll say, oh, I want to do, I want to do sadhana, I want to do what they're doing. So the sadhu sangha leads to bhajana kriya, and the bhajana kriya leads to anartha nivriti. So now you do your sadhana, and your unwanted habits and desires start going away. And when they're sufficiently gone away, there's no obstacle anymore, internally. 
so you're stable. And then your faith's not going to be shaken. Your, your devotional life's not going to go like this anymore. Good day, bad day. 64 rounds, no rounds. Three principles, seven principles, four principles. It's not going to go like that. Oh. This is my mineral water. It'll take a half hour before we eat. That means we have to eat it. Half hour. It's going to be a late night tonight. Oh, it's Friday, right? No problem. Yeah, we'll party all night. Don't worry. <laughs> Dhammadur Asama is included at no extra charge. <laughs> is that okay? Did that make sense? Um, so we have a um, Bhagavan realization and Paramatma realization. So I was wondering, uh, um, and the lovely prayer that you talked about, the Holy Name Retreat, about, um, you know, um, bring my heart closer to your heart, and mm-hmm. Paramatma is in the heart. So I was wondering that when we are um, looking for guidance, do we go internally to our Paramatma to guide us, or then, or do we go? We pray to Krishna. I mean, it's Krishna anyway, but how will we see? I was just going to say, Radha Gokulananda is in your heart. Is that true? <laughs> and Lord Brahma says, Yam Sham Shandarama Chinta Gunasma. He said, I see Sham Shandar. He didn't say, I see Paramatma. So that Krishna that's in your heart is the Krishna you worship. So, of course, Paramatma comes as intelligent. Carmendria, Devi Dasi. She doesn't know. Um, can you get me a spoon? <laughs> That's not a real name. Car- her name's Carmen. And Carmendria means working senses, like the hands, the legs. And if you had the name Carmendria Devi Dasi, it means I'm a servant of my senses. <laughs> so it's not really a good name. <laughs> You don't want that one. Okay, we'll throw that one away. Um, uh, so that's the idea. So, like, you can pray to your guru, you can pray to Prabhupada, you could pray to the Paramatma, you can pray to that Krishna you worship, because really that's the one in your heart. And the one, what do you mean he's in my heart? The one I think of is the one that's in my heart. So, it's not like so. Black and white. I have a prayer, so I got a picture of Paramatma. And, well, you pray to the deity all the time, right? Does that make sense? Or you were asking something else? Well, I was just wondering whether is it wrong to try and connect to I, I suppose Paramatma? Yeah, yeah, if you're in Shantaras, Yogi, yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> but for us, we're not trying to like become Paramatma realize we're trying to go to Braj and worship Radha Shyam. So naturally that's who we would pray to. Right? So see to see to seeing Krishna. You should pray to Radha Gokulananda or Radha London Ishvara. That's natural. I mean not you should, you have to, but it might just, if you think about it, it might be natural. Or, like, a lot of devotees are very attached to the deities in Vrindavan. Right, Hisham. So it's like, they live all over the world, but those are their, you know, they're just like, okay, those are my deities. That's my Radharani, so beautiful. Or Mayapur. It doesn't matter, whatever works. Whatever Krishna works for you, go for it. So... It's not like, you know, we understand Paramatma is giving guidance, Krishna's within the heart. You can pray that way, you know, if you want that guidance, of course. But, you know, like when you say Krishna, what do you mean by that? Who do you think of? Who's that Krishna? Coward boy with the gopis, a deity, what is it? Is it the Paramatma? For devotees, no. Generally, no. 
That's the object of the yogis, Shantaras. And Lord Chaitanya didn't come to give Shantaras. At least Dasya service. Is that all right? Yeah, so what, what you're saying is that, yes, Paramatma does exist within the heart, but that, that is also the Christian, it's in yeah. the heart that yeah. you pray to. Yeah. Like, like, for example, maybe you've noticed this, that Prabhupada is writing in a purport, and then he says, Narayan, or Vasudev, or Vishnu, it's like, well, he's talking about Krishna, why is he? But, those names specifically have specific meanings, and maybe in the context of the purport, he wants to, you know, like he's talking about Krishna's everywhere. So it says Vasudev, it means he's everywhere. But who do you think Prabhupada's thinking of when he says Vasudev? I think he's thinking of Krishna's energy everywhere or Paramatma? No, he's thinking of his whatever rasa he's in, whoever his Ishtadev is, that's who he's thinking. Of. Yes? Obviously. I remember that uh, we had deities in, in one temple I was in in America, Radha Gididhari. And the temple president, you know, there's always headaches. And all day you'd hear him going, he'd be saying, Oh, Gididhari, Gididhari. Because, yeah. you know, trying to run a temple, there's always problems. And you always need help. So it's like natural. He didn't say, oh, super soul, oh, Paramatma. Yeah, that would be weird, don't you think? Was that Dina Bandha Prabhupada? Gray. Mm -hmm. San Diego. San Diego. Oh, Gididhari. Oh, Coco Lananda. Right? Why not? So, you know, if we say Brahman, what do you think when you say Brahman? You think the effulgence coming from Krishna. You don't just think effulgence and no Krishna, right? Paramatma, that's an expansion of Krishna. So because you're a Krishna Bhakta or Bhaktin, that's how you think, right? Yes? Do you know Paramatma realization itself? That's for the yogis. That's what you. They want to see the Paramatma. Some of them want to become the Paramatma. <laughs> also, some of them, when they see the Paramatma, they think, "Oh, I'm seeing myself." And Lord Chaitanya said, "Let's go back to Braj." Like, wow. You know, it's really good. If we're very clear on what Lord Chaitanya is giving, because he doesn't give it often, it is so high and so rare and so valuable that to not take advantage of it is utter, utter, utter ignorance. No, I don't say ignorance. It's just misfortune. Because normally you can't get into Braj, just some, you know, Kali Yuga person. You know, best you can do is Vaikuntha, generally. Isn't it? On reverence. And Lord Chaitanya says, forget the on reverence stuff. We're going to Braj. Spontaneous bhakti. Just love me. You know, do your sadhana, but the goal is to love me. And, you know, like, if you chastise me, that's like way better than chanting, Om Purnam Adha Purnam Idam. You are the supreme. You are the greatest, magnificent, the whole. The... No, just chastise me. I like that better. Madhya Soda with the stick. Krishna's like, yeah, this is what I, this is what I'm into. And the Brahmins come and he's like, yeah, oh, whatever. <laughs> um you know, but it's like he's not interested in that. Right? So we understand that and that's how we're being guided. So it's like take advantage. Like if Lord Chaitanya wants to give it, I'll take it. You know. What you're telling is giving you braj, prema. You don't want to say, uh, but Mahaprabhu, I have a question. Um, you giving up Paramatma, or should I worry about it? It's like we're going to go. We're going to braj. We're going to worship Radhisham. You could be a gopi. You could be a coward boy. You could be in paternal ras. 
Go for it. I'm giving it out. You know, limited time offer. You know, the next 10,000 years after that, it's over. <laughs> Not even 10,000 then, right? We're, it's like 9,000 and what? 460 or something. Time's running out, ladies and gentlemen. You want to go back to Braj, you've got to do it, you know, soon. Limited time offer. Next Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Black Friday is it? Is an American thing, right? Not anymore. Yeah, we're waiting for it. Yeah, right. of course. Of course, the greatest country in the world imports all nonsense to the rest of the world, right? isn't it? <coughs> Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, is that all right? Going to Braj instead? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Take advantage. You know. Paramatma will go with you. He goes everywhere, don't worry. He's not going to, he won't leave you. But then you don't need him there because Krishna's there. Yeah. Yes? So, philosophically, I can relate to that, but like more emotionally, I really can't. So, if you ask me, like, so you want to go back to Virgil, I'd say. Why? No. Where do you want to go? I, it's, I have no. It's just. I have no conception of that. I have. A, it's just too far fetched, basically. You like, it. you like Vrindavan? I have not been to Vrindavan. Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a retreat um, the last weekend of February next year. You're all invited. I know. Go to mahatmadas.com and register now. All the good rooms are going fast. <laughs> Black Friday offer, I guess. Seriously, yeah. This, I can't make a Black Friday offer because it's already too cheap. <laughs> we, all we do is just charge you what we pay, so we can't. You know, it's just our cost. We can't go up. You need to go to Vrindavan. That's the solution. It will solve this whole problem. Because, you know, the cool thing about Vrindavan is when you go there and you go to the places where Krishna had his pastimes, when you're going back to Godhead, you get to go in those pastimes. So now you're going to the actual place that you, you could be going. So you could say, oh, I like this mood. I like this place. I like and you talk to the people of Vrindavan, and they're all Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. And you start, oh, we start to get it, and then you can relate to it. Or maybe you're a Chaitanya Bhakta, and you want to take birth in Chaitanya Leva. You go to Mayapur, check it out, see how you like it. But you, 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 that's the closest we can get to the Leela, because that's the place where they happened. And we go there, and we hear about it, and the people are like, the people in Vrindavan are like crazy over Radharani. And to see it is so powerful. The first time I went to India, the thing that impressed me most was the people at Arti. Like, they did not take their eyes off the deities for the whole Arti. Like, not, they were like, you know, like just... And like bhakti all over their face. And <clears throat> it's like, oh, this is what it's all about. So it's really powerful to see it and then be there and feel it. And then you go to Vrindavan and you feel Radharani, like her compassion. It just pervades the whole place. And then all of a sudden you're chanting and chanting. And then when you finish chanting, you chant more. And it's like, what's going on here? So Radharani's mercy. You go, okay, this is Vrindavan. Yeah, okay, yeah, this is, this is good. I want, I want to do this. So that, that may be all you need. I mean, of course, you can read about it, but you should really go there. You want to go? No, I want to go to Mayapur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're doing both. You go, we go, we do one week in Vrindavan, and then we go to Govardhan for a week, and then we go to Mayapur for a week. So you're invited. It's going to be amazing. And we'll explore. We'll explore our own consciousness. And we'll explore the Dham and we'll talk about it and our relationship with Prabhupada and Guru. Beautiful. It's one of the, like, it's like, how would I describe it? It's like, you know, a cleanse. <laughs>
physical cleanse. You know, it's like every every year I do my liver cleanse, I do my gallbladder, you know, drink the lemon and tons of olive oil and you know, spend half your day on the toilet and all that um, for a few days, you know. But it's like I have to do this every year, cleansing. So like going to Vrindavan is like, oh, I need that cleanse every year. And then I'm like, I got rid of a lot. You know those cleanses where they say, you can get rid of, you know, 28 pounds of stool every day. You know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like success, you know. But <laughs> in Vrindavan, it's, that's what you feel like when you go to Vrindavan. It's, I just lift, I just like left like 28 kgs of anarthas. Isn't it? I'm not saying you won't get them back when you come here. But, but you definitely feel that way. And when you let that go, then you can understand Radha and Krishna. It's like all of that becomes like, it's so easy and natural to understand it. I had this experience, um, this was, well, it was like 19, maybe 96, 97, I was in Vrindavan. And every class was Radhe this, Radhe that, you know, Nanda Baba this, it was like all like, woo, 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 you know like really way up there. It was a certain time in Iskand where devotees were discovering all the books and the different genres and all these leelas they never heard. So all the classes were like, you know, like totally Rasik. And I was like, why are they talking about all of this? This is, you know, we should be talking philosophy. So I really wasn't into it. And I did Govardhan Parikrama. And when I finished it, I was like, Radhe, Radhe, Nanda Baba this, where are the stories, give me the books. It's exactly what happened. Like right at the end of the program. So it has that effect. You know, it's not, I can't explain exactly why it happened. That was just the mercy of Giri Raj. So I was thinking about this retreat, um, because I lived in India, and I, uh, I've been there so many times. Like... Not every year I've been a devotee, but almost. And I don't want to spend a year without going there because I need that cleanse. Like, I really need it. And then you go there, it's like, oh, I'm good. I needed that. Yeah. It's like if you exercise and you, you feel better. Oh, I needed that. So I think that's the solution. And then you'll be all right, hey, right, hey, doubt. And you know, they'll be like, give me those books. <laughs> what rasa am I in? I gotta find out. You know, you know I want to take, I want to serve Radha on this kunj. You know, mm-hmm. and all that starts coming up, which is interesting, yes. but it happens. So anyway, think about it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, these places uh, like Vrindavan and uh, Mayapur, they're, they're humbling us. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of uh, when I for the first time went to Mayapur, Vicky was there, she invited me first time, 12 years ago. I was there, right? You were there, yeah, you, you, you were trying to get, get me booked all the time. Kitty <laughs> 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 introduced me, Kitty Kumari introduced me to it. I said, my best friend, mom, come and meet him and your wife. Mm. And, uh, okay, I thought, oh, that's the man from the books, you know. I was sometimes escaping you and how <laughs> it is there. So, when I was... I don't remember. <laughs> but, yeah. In my um so, um, I, I told my guru, Deo, his holiness, Kadam Kanaswami, I told him, I'm not going to the temple anymore, really, it, it's, it's terrible, I'm not going. You know, you know all these Bengali people in the temple, they're just, you know, pushing, <laughs> pushing like this, and it's not nice anymore, I can't see the deities, and uh, for me it's... Okay. And they don't say, excuse me, and they don't use deodorant. No, no. <laughs> so and you know, and you know what he said, and really, I started to cry. He said, listen, Gita Govinda, no, my name was Gisela, that my older, I wasn't initiated here. And he said, you know, you, you are sleeping in a room with a wonderful bed, you have heat in your room, very comfortable. These guys, they come with buses from the middle of nowhere, they come here and look where they're sleeping, in the cold, every night, outside in the cold. 
and uh, they buy they don't have money but the last rupees they buy the ticket to come here and you know why they're not there at 4 30 for the mango arti but at 3 30 is that because they're so eager to see the dainties and that's why they push everybody they want to see the dainties yeah, yeah, that's yeah. their only goal yeah. and you just think about you're coming from the west and yeah. a nice place and all these things and that really that humbled me so much we don't see uh, we we just see the outside the external, mm. external things like pushing people mm. but they're pushing because out, oh, yeah, yeah. out of love yeah. the lord they're so greedy and so eager to see the yeah. lord yeah. that they totally forgot everything they yeah. don't they don't want to will yeah. and that's also happening in Rindau, but those places are humbling us oh yeah that's my i, I speak for my own Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a story. You know, Mayapur gets crowded with tourists. And, you know, a lot of devotees come up to me and say, "I don't like it. This is like my home, and these people have invaded my home." You know, it's like, well, you know, it is not exactly just for you. And like, so I said, you know. If you're going to live in Mayapur, you have to appreciate Bengalis. Yeah, because otherwise, that's, you know, you're in Bengal. And how can you live somewhere if you don't like people, right? So I always try to appreciate them. Like you say, you know, they're coming, simple people. And so one day it was, it was like lots of people, one of the most crowded days. So I was thinking, I have two choices, either to appreciate them or go crazy <laughs> and commit offenses to them. And I thought, well, better I appreciate. So I was like, oh, these Bengalis. Amazing, they're all coming here, these village people. It's so nice. As soon as I did that, a man came up and embraced me. <laughs> he just started smiling and embraced me. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like, okay. Put out the right vibe and, you know, they pick it up and... Yes. So we'll see you all there in Govardhan. <laughs> you can sign up tonight. Yeah, we did it. We did Mayapur every year for like three years, and then last year was the first year in Vrindavan at Govardhan mm -hmm. Retreat Center. Beautiful. So it was quite nice. And you know, what we did the last day. This was really interesting. Borijan Prabhu took us to Govardhan. So we sat down and he said, Tell Govardhan how you became a devotee. Tell Govardhan anything you want to tell him about your life. So everybody was sitting there, you know, whispering. You know, so, you know, when I was 17. <laughs> and we're talking to Govardhan and just telling him everything. It's amazing. We'll do that again. And after we did that, he said, Okay, so tell him what you want now. Pray. So it was like a conversation with Govardhan. Now he lives there a lot of the year, so he's really like in communication with Govardhan. So it's like to be with him, it's like you're, it's taking you into the, the real realm of Govardhan. So you're actually there very deeply. So that, these kinds of experiences are like special. Like you have to have them. And they'll just like take you to another level. Yes, so it's the last week. Um, we finish on the 1st of June, March, I think, and we start whatever, work your way back. I forget, 25, 26, 26. No, it's only 28 days in February. Right? Yeah. It's like 26th or something. 26th right? of the 1st of March. Yeah. So write it down and tell your boss. You take, yeah. him, take him off. Is there an over the retreat center? Yeah. It's brand new, all the rooms are nice. We all live together. Prasadam is fantastic. 26th of February, till the 1st of March. Yeah. Then the week before, I'll be in Vrindavan, so we, I'll probably do a, a workshop in Vrindavan also at that time. Do some Purikamas. And then we go to Mayapur afterwards. So we'll see you all there. <laughs> One big party. And every year in Mayapur we go, we get a boat and we do a kirtan on the Ganga. It's really nice. It'll never be the same again.
We go from intellectual to rasa <laughs> experience. Yeah. I mean, it's true, like what Paul was saying. It's like, you, you know, you, we were looking in Rati's house and this beautiful picture of Radha and Krishna, you know. And it's like, by Sachin and Ananda, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, literally, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, that was a joke. <laughs> so I'm looking at this picture of God saying, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, like, we can't fathom what is going on here between those two, the depth of it. If you go to Vrindavan, you get a little something. It's like you get a glimpse. And if Radharani is merciful, you get more than a glimpse. You're like, oh. Yeah. I think I'm understanding something a little bit. Then you get to go to Radha Kun, take some water on your head, get Radha Rani's mercy, Shama Kun. Wow. It's powerful. You get to see Prabhupada's rooms in Vrindavan. It's powerful. Rupa Goswami Samadhi, Bhajan Kutu. Sit there and pray. It's completely different. It's because it's it's the closest thing you get to going back to Godhead. Right. You just spend time there because all you're doing all day is glorifying Krishna and hearing about him. And you know, from four AM till the time you go to sleep, that's all that goes on. There's nothing else. So it's it's like, you know, we need that time, you know, we need to have that experience of just sometimes just doing nothing but hearing and chanting in a holy place with holy people and nothing else on your mind. We need that. We don't get it here. We're, we're always getting truncated. You know, have to do this, have to do that. And, and another thing that I found is I lived in Mayapur and I found that when you live in the Holy Dom, when you hear a class, you're hearing it on a very deep level. <laughs> You're not hearing it like you normally hear it because your consciousness is purified, so it's going in more deeply. So it's like really hearing in the dawn is really special. It's not like hearing here. You you absorb more, you understand more, you realize more. Yes? Maybe. Is it She's too humble. Is it because of uh, the fact of having the whole day association of devotees yeah. around you? So many, so many factors. Being in the Dom, of course, the effect of the Dom, that you can absorb more because you're more, because everything you're doing is a thousand times more powerful. So your job is a thousand times, you know, you're so, everything. So you're in this optimal state of consciousness. You can really absorb things. Yeah, when I lived in Mayapur, I was traveling a lot, but I was based in Mayapur. And, and I, like, I like to go out and, and give classes and seminars. And I remember when I was living in Mayapur, sometimes I would go out and I would say things and I, didn't, I would just reflect on what I'd say. Like, how did I know that? Because you're in the Dom all the time. That's how you know it. You know, it's like I would surprise myself. The things I would say. i go, yeah, that's only because I lived there I got some mercy to realize things that maybe I wouldn't have realized anywhere else. So. Jai. Okay, if you all come to Govardhan, I'll go on Harinam tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Deal? <laughs> okay, what do we do? We do Dhammarastika now? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Jai Jai Sivan Jai Jai This Sahajya Nitai Go Radhe Sham Hare Krishna Hare Ram. You know that mantra? Mm. Prabhupada said not to chant. Right behind the temple, they chanted. 
Nitaigo Radhe Sham Hare Krishna Ram Prabhupada said it's it's a rasa boss, it's not proper. He said you can chant Nitai Gaur Radhe Sham Jai Krishna Balaram. <laughs> Nobody chants it. I think everyone's afraid to chant it or they don't know, but Prabhupada said you could chant it. Jai Nitai Gaur Radhe Sham Jai Krishna Balaram. Hare Krishna. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to light your candles. <laughs> One little candle offered to Damodar. Wow. It's like you think, that's an insignificant. But what is the benefit of offering a little insignificant lamp to Dhammadar? Like so much benefit. Right? So I need the words because I'm, I'm not Shruti Dhar. And I can get lines from verses mixed up. Sirada Damadar ki So Can you have the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Big enough? It's too small. Screen? You need to bring it. Yeah. I put it on the screen. Yeah, this is better maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Then you have to scroll it, right? No. Shall I yeah, you can maybe scroll it for me. Um, why don't we pretend we're in Krishna Balaram temple now? Why don't we pretend we're in Krishna Balaram temple? And we're chanting the um, we're chanting the Dhammadarashtika in Krishna Balaram. Can we do that?
forgot to mention, tomorrow we're doing a self-care workshop. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Tomorrow we're doing a self-care workshop. You're all invited. It's um, normally it's five hundred dollars. It's going to be free tomorrow. Um, it starts at ten. If you come at ten, I want it's five hundred dollars. Five hundred euros. Um, that's more than five hundred dollars. But if you come before ten, it's free. And um, we have just produced from our Japa Affirmation book, we produced Japa Affirmation cards, which are like a deck of cards. Can you open it up? <clears throat> a deck of cards, each card with one affirmation. And on the back, you have the affirmation on the front, on the back you have an explanation. They're made of plastic. You can spill prasadam on them and they're still good to go. <laughs> So they're available. Um, they just came out hot off the press, first time in Amsterdam. It's good for your japa, and they're good gifts for Christmas. How many do we have here, Koshan? A hundred? Today? I have a whole box. Like a hundred? So they have to come tomorrow together. I have like a 30. You only have 30? Here or at home? Well, then you're gonna have to come tomorrow. No, no, I have 30. We have 30 with us. They're selling fast. Get them before they go. Quantity discounts available. Who's gonna go first? Second. You make a note.